What's going on everybody and welcome back to episode 3 of the Nano Tank Build. Today I'm going to be upgrading the return pump on the Waterbox 20 gallon cube. So, here is the standard pump that comes with the Waterbox 20. Not a bad pump, I did run it. It's quiet, it pushes water out. I forget exactly what it is here, let's see. Um, max is 1000 liters per hour. So 1,000 liters is under, I believe it's under 300 gallons per hour. So this is plenty of a sufficient pump, I believe. Some people like a lot of water going through their filtration and some don't. So the bad thing about this type of pump is two things. One, you can't control how much water goes through it. And another is these suction cups, okay? I don't really like suction cups on a pump. They do make things nice and quiet, but if you push this down against the glass, it's fine, it's nice and quiet. But if you wanna pull the pump out of the tank, you know, you have this hose attached here, usually you grab it by the cord, and that's what can happen. The suction cups stay on here, and the other one is on here. So I knew right away, all right, I gotta upgrade, get this thing out of here. Luckily, I had this in the basement. I got this, I think it was on eBay for $28. I was going to use this as my carbon reactor pump for the 75 gallon reef tank and I ended up not using it so for a return pump under 30 bucks this is something that is pretty cool. It's absolutely tiny and it does 1200 liters per hour and it is fully adjustable. So it does come with multiple different, I'll show you guys real quick, it does come with multiple different like barb adapter ends and it does come with this you know, a little screen to protect the inlet from sucking in, you know, any critters like uh, snails or hermit crabs or anything like that. If you have that in your sump section, I don't usually have that in there, so I don't usually use them. But anyway, this is a good pump. What we're going to do is we're going to hook it up and see how it works on the Waterbox 20. It does come with your simple controller so that you can raise and lower it. Now, I did the math already on this. And max head pressure, I wrote a four here, I don't know why. A four feet is the max head pressure that I can take. But at the lowest head pressure, which is zero, it gives you 317 gallons per hour max. Now, I calculated how much head pressure my tank's going to be having. It's about 14 inches of head pressure. So the max I'm going to be able to get is 265 gallons per hour, which is plenty for a 20 gallon tank plenty i usually like to do the whole five times turnover rate on my tank so this is going to be just perfect so i'm going to do is i'm going to set it up it has the coupling and all the different adapters i already have it hooked up to the stock silicone tubing with the return nozzle adapter so i'm going to do is i'm going to hook this all up and put some water in the tank because i have to test fill it anyway so we'll get that going, we'll turn this pump on, and we'll see how it looks. All right, so the pump is officially hooked up. It was an easy install. Right now it's on the third setting, and it's got some kick to it for such a little tiny pump. That is plenty of flow, and of course I can obviously raise and lower it full speed or full working pressures, yeah, that's a lot. I don't need to be that high. I think that's going to be a good install. I like it. Testing the tank out at the same time, but yeah. Here's a little controller. I'm going to put a little sticky tab on the back when I set it up. But running good Thanks for watching everybody and I'll see you guys on the next one all right I just want to thank you guys again for stopping by if you did like this video make sure to give it a thumbs up and while you're here hit that little crab icon to subscribe to my channel hit the notification bell for any future videos or updates and in case you haven't seen these two videos you might want to click on one and check it out again thanks for stopping by